Hello and welcome to Rewildology, the show that explores conservation, travel, and rewilding the planet. I am your host, Brooke Mitchell Norman, conservation biologist and adventure traveler. It's pretty hard to fathom that 2021 is coming to a close and 2022 is right around the corner. At this time of year, it's only natural that we take some time to reflect on the past 12 months. What did I accomplish? What goals did I miss? How am I going to approach the new year? In today's episode, you're going to hear four amazing former guests answer these questions and so much more. First, you'll hear from Kayla Fratt, conservation doc handler extraordinaire. Next is Josie Cardoso, the badass naturalist guide and hotel owner in the Galapagos Islands. Following is Judith Wanda, the inspirational professor in Tanzania working diligently to change the conservation narrative in East Africa. Fourth is Charles Von Rees, PhD, freshwater conservation guru. And lastly, you'll hear from me and my reflections on my first year as a podcast host and what I hope to accomplish in 2022. All right, let's get to today's episode with Kayla, Josie, Judith, and Charles. Hey there, this is Kayla Fratt, and I run Canine Conservationists, so I train conservation detection dogs. You have heard me before on episode 28, which was Canines in Conservation, Detecting Scientific Data. And in the last year, um, so I ended 2020 on a pretty rocky note. Overall, I feel like I, I weathered the start of the pandemic pretty well, but towards the end of 2020, I was in the midst of a breakup. I had just been fired. I was <laughs> looking for jobs, fighting the unemployment system. It was a mess. Um, and I didn't really set any New Year's resolutions. I just didn't, I wasn't in a place where I felt like I could think about those goals because it felt like so many things were just out of my control. I was really just focusing on putting the next foot in front of me, which I suppose counts as a goal of some sort. But when I look back on my 2020, the thing that I am most proud of was that in on December 20th of 2020, I brought home Niffler, my puppy. And so over the course of 2021, I have been raising him up to be kind of the next generation of conservation detection dog. And what I have accomplished with him in this year is my number one biggest accomplishment for the year. So when we started January 2021, he was he was 11 weeks old. He was a little fat potato. He was just learning to search to sniff out a little bit of food. And by July of 2021, he was working with me full time on a wind farm to help find bats that had been killed by wind turbines so that hopefully we can find some solutions to reduce bat mortality on wind farms. And I'm just incredibly proud of him. 2021 overall really turned out better than I expected based on where I was in kind of December 2020, January 2021. And when I think about next year, the biggest goal that I have for myself is that I want to do one nice thing for my body every day. And that might be taking a nap, it might be stretching, it might be going for a run. Um, and I'm counting mental health as part of my body because my brain is part of my body. I also have a couple personal goals kind of surrounding financial security and professional success. You know, I want to, I have a couple savings targets that I would like to hit, um, you know, some stuff that's a little bit less sexy. But the big thing that I'm really looking forward to in 2021 as well, or gosh, 2022, it is 2021 right now, is travel. So I, in 2017, no, 2018, 2019, drove about a third of the Pan American Highway. And my goal is in May of 2022 to take my dogs and my van and take my work on the road and drive the Pan American Highway. So one of my goals for next year is to start at the Pan American Highway. And then I would like to spend the solstice, the summer solstice, in the Arctic Circle up at the northern tip of the Pan American Highway. And then as I'm going south, I have two different mountains that I hope to climb. One is Ixtaccihuatl, which is one of the two mountains that overlooks Mexico City. It's a dormant volcano, or maybe extinct volcano. Anyway, not super active, I hope. And then Volcan Baru, which is one of the volcanoes in Panama. It's over 11,000 feet tall, and it's one of the few places in the world, if not the only place in the world, where you can see both the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean at the same time. Usually you can't because it's too cloudy, but a girl can dream. And as I've been thinking about these goals, I've been really trying to think about, you know, 
intention, like lengthening my time horizon. So rather than thinking about by the end of 2022, I want canine conservationists to be paying me a salary because currently the nonprofit that I'm running does not pay me a salary. I'm surviving off of income from dog training and freelance writing instead. That is a long-term goal for me, but I think as I'm thinking about 2022, I'm really trying to lengthen my time horizons and get myself used to the idea that 2021 was a rebuilding year after you know, November and December of 2020 being so incredibly disruptive to my life and my life plans. I really felt like I took 12 steps backwards in that two-month period. Um, and it's okay that 2021 was a lot of me kind of figuring things out. And as, as I look forward to 2022, I... I'm excited to do the Pan American Highway while simultaneously feeling a little bit conflicted about taking another year off of really intentionally building this nonprofit and really intentionally working towards helping more dogs help more conservation biologists or helping more conservation biologists by training dogs for them. Maybe that's my advice is thinking about expanding your time horizons and, you know, putting your own oxygen mask on first. And I hope and I plan and I expect and I intend to continue working towards conservation biology goals and training my dogs and producing my podcast and educating people and doing the freelance writing and the education and the outreach that I'm so passionate about while I'm also refilling my own mental health cup through travel. So yeah, those those are kind of the big plans for 2022. I'm Really hopeful that vaccinations continue going in the right direction. Um, we just heard from the WHO today or yesterday that it looks like three doses of Pfizer are working against Omicron. So as long as um, everything continues looking like it will be safe to travel and responsible to travel in 2022, I'm really, really looking forward to that. And, you know, continuing to take care of the dogs and continuing to prepare to train that next generation of conservation detection dogs to help our biologists. So thank you so much for having me on the show, Brooke, and Happy New Year. Hello, my name is Josie Cardoso. I'm a naturalist guide on the Galapagos Islands, and I also help my mom running our little hotel of six rooms in Puerto Vallarta, in one of the inhabited islands that is called Santa Cruz. And I was part of the episode 12 and 13, having fun in the Galapagos sun. One of the goals that I set up for this year was to uh, be able to lead amazing expeditions on the Galapagos Islands, having in consideration that COVID struck the islands very hard due to the fact that no tourism was going around and we depend 100% on tourism. And what I did in order to be able to lead expeditions was to contact different companies and put myself available for work with them. I used to work with only one company and uh, Realizing the hard conditions of COVID and the many cancellations that we were having with trips and people not being able to travel to the Galapagos Islands, I decided to contact other companies. And I was so fortunate to start working since uh, last year, one trip a month since December. And in May, uh, more other companies activated the trip, so I was able to lead amazing expeditions. And I'm so happy for that. I feel so lucky that I was able to lead expeditions and share these wonderful places with the guests that were brave enough to visit the Galapagos Islands. My next year resolutions, I have a few in mind, and one will be uh, to spread the word of conservation of what we do on the Galapagos Islands. And I think leading trips is one of the best ways to share the beautiful places and fragile ecosystems that we have. So I'll be working very hard and a lot all next year on the Galapagos Islands. Also, I'll be leading expeditions outside of the Galapagos Islands, like the Imbaja, the gray whales, or the monarch butterflies. And that's also another chance to spread the war of conservation. And as well, a, another next year resolution is to be more time involved with the project that we have about the community library for the Galapagos Islands. We have our guides association, it has the entire management of this beautiful place that is the only community library on Santa Cruz Island and actually in the whole Galapagos. So I'm very involved with the management of this uh, place. And uh, right now we are in the mission of raising funds for the next two years. So that's my next year resolution will be to raise the enough funds to keep this uh, place open for the kids, for the young people, for the adults, that it's a place where it's very important because with no education, it's very hard to implement conservation. So I strongly believe that education is the key to preserve these beautiful and enchanted islands. 
What I'm most hopeful for 2022 is that all of us, we, we will realize that the COVID has not gone, is gone yet, and it will not go for maybe another year or two. And we have to work together to be respectful with the regulations that we need in order to stop the spread of this virus. There is a lot of industries that rely on people's traveling around the world, like tourism, like us on the Galapagos Islands. And because people misbehaving and not, uh, for example, wanted to get the vaccine, we can uh, go back to lockdowns or uh, quarantines or governments becoming more strict and not letting the people to come back and go right back to work and for them having to quarantine. So that will reduce the amount of people traveling around the world. And definitely for conservation of fragile areas, we do need people to visit them and be aware of these beautiful ecosystems, and that will be the only way to preserve them. So please, uh, let's keep together and work together in trying to stop the virus and the spread of the different virus that we're going to get by just following the regulations. So I really hope that everybody will have an amazing 2022, and we still have to be patient with the things that are going to happen around us, and just we need to know how to manage them and handle them with patience and always thinking about the other people around us, around the world, that will be affected if we don't follow the regulations. So happy holidays for everybody and a great 2022. Hi, my name is Judith Wanda. I'm currently assistant lecturer at St. Augustine University of Tanzania. And I'm also undertaking a PhD in journalism and mass communication in the University of Dar es Salaam. I'm happy that I'm still alive. This year has been the most toughest year ever with the struggle of COVID. Uh, we have witnessed a lot of people pass away. I've lost colleagues. But I'm grateful that we've been able to sail through throughout the year. And for me, this year, one of the things I can say, I had targeted to make sure that I finish uh, my PhD. And I'm so happy that I'm actually on the verge of finishing. I'm now working on my last part of my paper, of which my thesis, of which I'm looking forward to be able to submit it in the end of this month. But one of the struggles that I've had this year basically has been to, to be able to connect with friends. You see, this is a year where I really wanted to travel a lot and visit different parks and just want to learn a lot about the community, especially in terms of uh, conservation. I really wanted to go and visit women and different types of groups of communities that are living national parks, besides national parks. But it has not been easy because then, of course, the challenges of finances and the challenges of time and the challenges of this COVID situation. And also another thing that I really wished this year I could achieve was in terms of me being able to publish more research papers in terms of my academic work. But also it's been a challenge because a lot of journals, they don't have uh, the team of people working on it not able to meet or they have reduced the manpower and it takes forever to get your paper to be accepted. So it's been a bit of a struggle and it's also something that has been depressing on my side. But I look forward to have the two papers that I've submitted at least to be able to get at least one or two journals accepting to publish. And um, one thing I can say for sure, another benefit for this year, basically, I managed to travel to German. I was able to do a part of my PhD research in German and I was able to get to finish my own thesis there. So that is a plus or an additional thing I can say that I've achieved this year. And now come next year, my goal next year is to make sure that I publish more papers. I look forward to start my postdoctoral studies next year. And I look forward to now have this NGO that um, we are starting together with my colleague who is the former chief of uh, Mukomazi, who is the current chief of uh, Uzungwa, uh, Abel Mutui. We are starting up an NGO. We are in the process of finishing registering the NGO. But the whole essence of this NGO is to help this group of women, who are 15 women in Mukomazi, to be able to tap into opportunities that they have within and around the national park. And uh, what we are doing, we are helping these women to be able to tap into extra skills, like be able to facilitate cultural tourism to we are to to visitors, be able to create batiks, be able to, that visitors can come and, and uh, 
buy from them. And we also want them to engage in extracurricular activities that will basically help them be a source of income. Because Mukomazi is a very dry area and they're struggling with uh, lack of water. But us, be, with the support that we're getting from Kate Adamson uh, Funds, the conservation fund. We are really very so grateful because these women are being empowered. We are now in the midst of getting to start building a, a center for them where they will have a curio shop, they will have a place where tourists will be hosted. They will be doing other extra type of activities. So this year, the, the, this coming year, that is the great biggest project I'm looking forward to do. And I'm looking forward to have this project engage and attract various people around the world. And uh, we really welcome visitors from the U.S. to come and visit us in Mkomazi, where they will get to meet these wonderful and amazing mothers. And also they will get to meet these students, because apart from mothers, we are also working with kids, students from different secondary schools around Mkomazi, who are doing amazing artworks. And we want our visitors to really enjoy these artworks and be able to take them back home when they travel back home. Uh, the advice that I could give someone is that to stay positive. Yeah, Corona has really taught us that things can just change. The world that we knew it's a village today, it's never, it's not, it's not a village in an essence that it's not a physical village, but now the world has become a technological village. Now through Zoom, through uh, Teams, through various platforms, we are able to meet and we are able to connect. So what I can say is that I would like to advise anyone who is listening to me to be able to stay positive and don't kill your dreams. Let them keep being alive. Uh, don't lose hope. Things are going to be better. The only thing you have to do is just work hard. Yeah? And plan yourself. And everything will work out. Otherwise, I wish you a happy new year. Enjoy. And may this year be a year where we get to meet. Feel free. And we get to connect. I'm here in Tanzania. Wish you all the best. Hey, Rewildologists. This is... Charles Van Rees. I'm a conservation biologist, naturalist, and nature communicator currently working at the University of Georgia. You may remember me from episode 37 of Rewildology, the imbalance between life and water, where Brooke and I were discussing <laughs> everything from mixed martial arts to freshwater resources management and endangered species. I want to wish everyone a very happy new year and definitely wishing everyone a lot of success uh, and abundance in the coming months. Thinking about my past year, I certainly ran into a lot of things that I kind of wanted to accomplish and, and didn't. I think it was a hard year for a lot of people. One of the things that I was setting as a major goal and intention for myself in 2021 was trying to have more solo time in nature. I think I like being around my friends a lot, and a lot of my time outside tends to be with other people, whether I'm nature guiding or taking people on bird walks and things like that, or just enjoying nice walks to catch up with friends. I notice that a lot of my time outside tends to be because I'm prioritizing someone else. And, and usually when it's about doing something for me, I have a harder time justifying that to myself and we'll just go back to work, you know, and say, oh, why don't, you know, why don't I just answer those emails or do the other thing? So a big goal of mine was to try to be a lot more intentional and deliberate about having time to myself outside. And I, I accomplished it a little bit, but I, I had planned on taking a very large trip as I switched between my job in Montana to my job in Georgia, where I was going to go and learn the natural history of the American Southwest. And I had friends I was going to see and a whole route planned out for a very long, several week long trip. And due to COVID getting worse and a bunch of other things, I, I didn't end up getting to do it. And so that was really frustrating. And that, and that felt like, you know, a bit of a failure for me. So that was a, that was a major setback and, and something I hope to maybe make up for in the future. As for things that I kind of did get done that I'm proud of, I certainly am really excited and proud to have successfully moved across the country to a new job. I went from, again, Montana to Georgia, which was a long, long journey. Got to, of course, hang out with Brooke in, in en route, which was delightful, and see some other friends as well, and lots of great new plant and animal friends I had never encountered before in the wild. And, you know, moving to a new place is a lot of work, and it's hard to make new friends and handle logistics. And I think these past few months, I feel like I've done a good job of keeping 
on top of all of that uh, while keeping up with the rest of my life. And I, it's, that has been, you know, an obvious challenge that I think I have risen to meet. That's felt very good. And another one that I, that I think has meant a lot to me has been making a lot of progress in my martial arts training. And that can be a difficult thing, you know, when you're dealing with skills like that and you already have a career to worry about things that require a lot of time investment, the progress can feel very slow and, and that can be very frustrating. And so for me, a major part of how I think I, I made, managed to make a lot of progress in my martial arts training was by being very cognizant of that, focusing on small iterative bits of progress and not telling myself, oh, I need to see this huge improvement, but, but paying such mindful attention to what I'm doing that I can tell, oh, you know what? I did this a little better than last year, right? And, that, and that's all that really matters is, is always being a little bit better than I was last time, focusing on myself and, and not worrying about what other people are doing, for instance. So moving on to what I'm most hopeful for then for the next year, I guess my, my resolution, folks, is, is pretty similar to what I've been talking about in the martial arts. I, I would really like to be uh, more intentional and more patient. I, I think I was frustrated at first moving somewhere new that things weren't coming together all at once. But just like anything else, starting a new life somewhere takes time. And good things are happening even if you're not seeing them always. And so you just need to be able to wait long enough, right? And, and then you'll start to see those things happening. I'm definitely feeling that way more now. So learning to not rush so much, be ready to, to kind of perceive and stay open to positive changes as they happen is, is a big one for me. And then beyond the resolution, I'm really excited to get my Nature Communication, Nature Facts blog started. It's gonna be called Gulo in Nature which will hopefully in 2022 be coming to a computer or mobile device near you. I'm hoping this will be kind of a broadly available resource for people who have nature questions, you know, from the absolute simplest type of things you might just wonder while, while in the shower one day to, you know, getting deep into evolutionary theory and, and some of the real science of ecology. So I'm excited to start that journey and, and of course, very feeling great about the possibility of sharing some of that with you. So all that being said, wishing everyone a very, very happy and prosperous new year once more. And thanks for listening. It's pretty incredible listening to them, right? And I hope you feel super inspired and your wheels are starting to turn about your 2022. And now I wanted to take some time to sit down with you and talk about my past year and 2022. So 2021 was a whirlwind to say the least, as I'm sure many of you can relate to. I still can't believe that Rewildology exists and to see it grow like it has just beyond my wildest dreams. Before I launched the podcast, I had set a goal of reaching 10,000 downloads by the one year mark. And I had absolutely no idea if I was going to even come close to that considering I have never done anything like this. And so when we hit that goal a month and a half before the one year mark, I just about lost my mind. <laughs> it just proved to me that this crazy idea I randomly had over a year ago was something that was worth pursuing and that my fear was just that. It was just fear and that getting over it was one of the best things that I could have done because the people I've met, the community that's been built so far, I'm just beyond grateful for. And I honestly don't know where I would be today without the podcast. And yeah, so this past year has been amazing. And especially hitting that really big podcast goal. Outside of that, I did set a goal of going on an international trip, which I successfully did twice, and I was able to take my husband on his first big trip, which was very rewarding and very exciting to Costa Rica, which, stay tuned, you all are going to hear about the, my adventures and the people I met very shortly. Some of the goals I didn't reach, one of the biggest ones, was I wanted to make $65,000 last year mostly so I could get out of student loan debt. I don't know if you, listener, are also drowning in student loan debt, but financial freedom is one of my really big long-term life goals because if you're financially free, then you can do a whole lot more in the world and you can give a lot more, which is my ultimate big goal. So 
Yeah, I had a lot of financial instability. I lost a second job through no fault of my own. I was working for a startup and they were going through a fundraising round and my position didn't make the cut. And of course, I couldn't be mad. I understand how business works and having employees is a big burden. And so you have to make cuts where you can and move on. But yeah, it left me in a pretty bad financial spot. And for about two to three months, I was unemployed and just did not want to take some other mediocre job. And thankfully, around August is when my mentor, Bill, approached me and asked if I wanted to come on with the Wild Source. And I immediately said yes. Thankfully, during this time, I was able to concentrate on the podcast 100%, which was fantastic. And I got a lot done. But it wasn't financially viable because I hadn't monetized this platform. And thank goodness I did get the role when I did because maybe I would have made some stupid decisions on forcing myself to find a way to monetize this when maybe that wasn't the right time. So I'm very grateful how it all worked out. I don't think I'm going to set that goal for next year. We'll just we'll just see how it plays out uh, when it comes to my income and and salaries and everything like that. So just very grateful to finally be working with my mentor and seeing what comes from that. But moving on to 2022, I have so many goals that I should probably narrow it down because I'm probably being super unrealistic, (laughs) you know, in true Brooke fashion. So one of my big goals is I want to double the downloads for 2022 or year two of the podcast to have double the impact. And that's obviously going to take twice as much work because to have double the impact, you need to do double the work. So figure out exactly what that looks like. I still need to put a plan in place behind that goal. I also want to continue growing this amazing community and build a super strong tight-knit community that we're all a part of and we can share our triumphs and our struggles and just be together through all of the conservation journey together. I also want to launch the Conservation Coffee Talk series. I don't know if you listened to my episode with Kara at the Lecker Coffee Shop, but we are conspiring to put these together and I want to make that a real thing. And don't worry if you're not in Denver, I want to find a way to record these so that you can see them as well. If you're outside of Colorado or the United States, I want to make sure that you can be involved in some way, shape or form for that. I also want to make huge headway on revamping my Big Cat research project with the Wild Source. Again, that's who I work with now. Already started to make some really big connections with that. And if everything goes through, I will definitely keep you updated because there might be some really big, awesome science to come out with that. Next, I want to start to put together my dream conservation travel series. Yes, and it's exactly what you think it is. (laughs) It would be some Incredible trips that I would put together that even you listener could potentially join and come around the world with me and meet the amazing people that I've had the opportunity to meet and be inspired with and possibly you could even enjoy meeting them as well. I want to pay off my private student loans, which I'm pretty sure I can do in the next 12 months and maybe even our car loan that'll knock out our debt significantly and then also... I know, I'm ridiculous. I'm still going. I want to do a 100-day challenge. I don't know if you've heard of the Mindset Mentor podcast, but he threw out this really great challenge and I loved it. It's a way to start new habits and I'm really good on finding new ways to continue making myself better. And in this 100-day challenge, it's exactly that. It's 100 days of consistently doing a new behavior that you want to learn. So I do all of these things already, but I have not been admittedly super consistent. So it's workout every day, which I pretty much already do that, but I will say I take some days off. And this way, even on rest days, would maybe just be some really deep mobility or stretching or something like that. I want to engage online every single day. So if you are also wanting to grow a social media platform, this is a fantastic way to do it. Just get online and actually be social. And I will admit that if I'm super busy that I do not always do this. And well, what's the point of social media if you're not being social? I want to perform at least five minutes of a mindfulness practice. I have experimented with a lot of mindfulness things and nothing has stuck. So (laughs) 
I really want to work on this and figure out what my brain likes because Lord knows I need to cool my britches sometimes. And I think that practicing for at least five minutes for 100 days will do that. And then read for at least 10 minutes every day. I absolutely love reading. But again, if I'm super busy between the podcast and working, I will admit that this gets to the wayside. So to reach all these things, I do need to get really strict on my schedule, which having a challenge like this will do. And listener, if you want to as well, join me, join me on this 100 day challenge and let me know if you would like to, whatever that habit might be. The items I listed, maybe you want to join as well and do them with me, or you have something completely different that you want to start on as well. Either way, reach out to me and let me know if you want to join because I would love an accountability partner (laughs) to keep me on my toes and make sure that I'm doing exactly what I said I would do. And then I also want to provide a book for you. So if you've never heard of the book Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz, PhD, I highly recommend that you grab one, see if you can get one online or at the library or I love thriftbooks.com. I get most of my books from there, um, secondhand, and I will provide a link in the show notes, but this book has completely changed my mind. I promise you whatever idea you currently have is too small and you will see why when you read this book and it will help you remove that glass ceiling above you. Lastly, I want to be a better wife. I will say that sometimes um, I get super busy and maybe I don't put my relationship first, which is what I should be doing because at the end of the day, my husband is my number one in my life. I'm sure if you are also a super motivated person like me, sometimes your to-do list takes priority and I need to work on that. So that is also a big goal of mine. Woo! Okay, I know that was a lot, but I would love to hear from you. What are your 2022 New Year's resolutions? Please reach out to me and let me know. I would love to be your cheerleader and just watch you crush your goals for next year. So again, thank you so much for being a part of the Rewildology journey in 2021. I cannot wait to be with you in 2022. Hey, thanks again for listening to this episode of Rewildology. If you like what you heard, hit that subscribe button to never miss a future episode. Do you have a cool environmental organization, travel story, or research that you'd like to share? Let me know at rewildology.com. Until next time, friends, together we will rewild the planet.